Welcome to a lesson on conservative equations and the Hamiltonian. A differential equation of the form x double prime plus f of x equals zero, where f of x is an arbitrary function, is called a conservative equation. For example, the pendulum equation, theta double prime plus g divided by l times theta equals zero, is a conservative equation. The equations are conservative as there is no friction in the system, so the energy in the system is conserved. Let us write the differential equation x double prime plus f of x equals zero as a system of nonlinear ordinary differential equations. To do this, we begin with x prime equals y, and if x prime equals y, y prime equals x double prime, referring back to the original equation, x double prime equals negative f of x. So now we have our system, x prime equals y, and y prime equals negative f of x. These types of equations have the advantage that we can solve for their trajectories easily. The trick is to think of y as a function of x for a moment, then we use the chain rule. So referring back to our work in blue, we know x double prime is equal to y prime, and applying the chain rule to find y prime, thinking of y as a function of x, we have y prime equals dy dx times x prime. And we know x prime is equal to y, and therefore we have y times dy dx. Now that we know x double prime is equal to y times dy dx, we replace x double prime in the original equation with y times dy dx. This gives us y dy dx plus f of x equals zero. For the next step, we integrate both sides with respect to x, which gives us the integral of y dy dx dx plus the integral of f of x dx equals c. Simplifying the first integral, we have the integral of y dy, the dx is simplify out, which gives us one half y squared. In other words, we have one half y squared plus the integral of f of x dx equals c. We now have an implicit equation for the trajectories with different c values giving different trajectories. The value of c is conserved on any trajectory. This expression is sometimes called the Hamiltonian or the energy of the system. So let's take a look at an example. We're asked to find the trajectories for the equation x double prime plus x minus x squared equals zero. This is the equation from our example 8.1.1 earlier in the chapter. We first write the given equation as a nonlinear system of ODEs we begin with x prime equals y, which indicates y prime equals x double prime, referring back to our given equation, x double prime is equal to negative x plus x squared. So our system is x prime equals y, and y prime equals negative x plus x squared. Now recall the trajectories must satisfy the equation shown below on the right, one half y squared plus the integral of f of x dx equals c, where in our case f of x is equal to x minus x squared and therefore the trajectories must satisfy the equation one half y squared plus the integral of x minus x squared dx equals c. Integrating, the integral of x minus x squared with respect to x is one half x squared minus one third x cubed, and therefore the trajectories must satisfy the equation one half y squared plus one half x squared minus one third x cubed equals c. And now we solve for y. We first multiply through by two and then take the square root of both sides of the equation. We do have to include a plus or minus. We have y equals plus or minus the square root of the quantity negative x squared plus two thirds x cubed plus two c. Plotting these graphs, we get exactly the trajectories in figure 8.1 shown here. In particular, we notice that near the origin, the trajectories are closed curves in this region here. They keep going around the origin, never spiraling in or out. Therefore, we've discovered a way to verify the critical point at zero comma zero is a stable center. The critical point at one comma zero here is a saddle as we've already discussed. This example is typical for conservative equations. And now let's consider an arbitrary conservative equation, x double prime plus f of x equals zero. Recall the equivalent system is x prime equals y and y prime equals negative f of x. All the critical points occur where x prime and y prime are both equal to zero. This indicates they occur when y equals zero along the x-axis, that is when x prime equals zero, and the critical points are those points on the x-axis or f of x equals zero. Recall the trajectories are given by the equation one half y squared plus the integral of f of x dx equals c, which in the most general case, if we solve for y, we have y equals plus or minus the square root of the quantity negative two times the integral of f of x dx plus two c. So because we have y equals plus or minus a square root, the trajectories are mirrored across the x-axis. In particular, 
there can be no spiral sources or sinks, again, if we have symmetry across the x-axis. The Jacobian matrix for the system is the two by two matrix with entries zero, one, negative f prime of x, zero. Recall the system is almost linear if the Jacobian is invertible. If the Jacobian is invertible, which occurs if f prime of x doesn't equal zero at the critical point. If we let j denote the Jacobian matrix, then the eigenvalues of j are the solutions to the determinant of the difference of j and lambda i equals zero, which gives us the equation zero equals lambda squared plus f prime of x. Solving for lambda, we have lambda equals plus or minus the square root of negative f prime of x. Recall the types of eigenvalues indicate the behavior at the critical points. And since we have lambda equals plus or minus the square root of negative f prime of x, we either get real eigenvalues of opposite sign if f prime of x is less than zero, or we get purely imaginary eigenvalues if f prime of x is greater than zero. This indicates there are only two possibilities for critical points, either an unstable saddle point or a stable center. There are never any sinks or sources. I hope you found this helpful.